Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the sum of a geometric series. If you haven't already done so, you want to make sure that you watch the previous video about an arithmetic series. Or even before that, we've talked about uh, geometric sequences in the past, which are also going to correlate uh, to what we're going to be talking about today. Now first, what is a geometric series, and what's the difference between a geometric series and an arithmetic series? Now when you actually see a series, it's always going to be written with a bunch of numbers separated by pluses. Because that's what a series is. A series, whether it's an arithmetic or geometric series, is a sum of the terms in, in a sequence. It's just that, in this particular case, we're going to look at a series, we're going to look at a sum of a set of numbers where those numbers are constantly being multiplied by the same amount as you go through those. Where in arithmetic series, you'd be always adding the same amount to get from one term to the next. Now, the formula that we're going to be using for a geometric series is given to us here. We can also see how we would represent the sum of a geometric series using summation notation or sigma notation. So you want to be familiar with both of those. If you notice with the sigma notation, you notice that we also have, just to the right of that, we, to the right of the sigma symbol, we have the um, explicit formula for a geometric sequence. That's what the g sub 1 times r to the exponent of n minus 1 is. Now, to find the um, sum of a series when it's a geometric series, and we use that formula, you want to recognize the fact that it's 1 minus r to the nth power. The actual exponent only applies to the r. It doesn't apply to the 1. So we don't put the n outside the parentheses. We apply, it, we apply that exponent just to the r. And then it's the entire fraction there, the entire numerator there is divided by 1 minus r. Now, let's, before we start to look at ex some examples, I want to look at how we can change some things on your calculator. Because if you notice with this formula, sometimes we're going to be working with fractions. Or your answers are going to be in the form of a fraction. And to make sure that you're getting the exact answer, we want to make sure that you have a setting uh, set correctly on your calculator. And you can always go back and change it after this lesson if you want to make it um, easier to be able to get an approximation. Um, otherwise, I'll show you how to do a couple things on your calculator to, to work around um, coming up with approximate answers as opposed to just always hitting enter. So let's look at your calculator. So get those out, and we're going to go into your settings. So let's see how we go about doing that. Okay, so on your calculator, go over here to the home button, and we're going to select, once we get to this home screen, we're going to go to settings. Now depending on your operating system for your calculator, when you select settings, it'll either give you a menu, a menu like this, or you might give you a menu just asking about the document settings. We want to go to document settings or the general settings, so select that. And if you tab down, if your calculation mode is set to be approximate, that means that, let's say if I want to take 70 divided by 3, instead of giving, getting an answer of 70 thirds, we would get a decimal answer. So if that happens on your calculator when you hit enter, right now you have it set to be the approximate solutions. We want it to be set to auto. Um, and then just go ahead and hit enter. And you want to make sure now that we're using a screen like this one. Are you going to, I should say, the uh, calculator screen, not the scratch pad. So let's say if I did do 70 divided by, th 70 divided by 3 now, I'm going to get the answer of 70 thirds. Now let's say if it were a situation um, and I wanted to get the actual, actual uh, decimal approximation, like maybe it's dealing with dollars and cents, I could hit Control Enter. And that'll give me the approximate solution. Um, once we get through this lesson, if you want to go back and change it, so if you just hit enter, you get the decimal equivalent or decimal approximation. What you would do is just go back to those same settings and just change the calculation mode back to being being uh, approximate. But we'll get to where we're going to use this in a minute. Let's just go back to our notes now. And let's look at this particular series. We have a geometric series here. We want to rewrite that finite series using sigma notation. So to write that, again, you start out with your symbols for sigma. Now we're going to say we're going to start out is always going to be the first term. So it would be n equals 1 that we put below sigma. Now above there, we're going to put the total number of terms in the series. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms in the series. And looking at the series, too, sometimes they have it written like this, but more frequently, they're actually going to give you just the actual values for each um, term in the series. So we'd have 4 times 3, which would be 12, 
And then 4 times 3 squared, or 4 times 9, would be 36. And this would end up uh, being 108. And this would end up being 324. So sometimes they'll give us a series looking like this. Occasionally they might do it like this bottom part. But what we're going to do is to the right of sigmas, we're going to write down what's the explicit formula for the sequence. The explicit formula that would give us each value in the sequence. And so to figure that out, we're going to start out with our first term. Our first term is 4. Our constant ratio we're multiplying by each time is 3. And then your exponent is going to be n minus 1. So that would be our, the way that we would write this using sigma or summation notation. Now we're going to actually evaluate that series using the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. Now, I know, yes, you might say, well, can't I just add 4 plus 12 plus 36 plus 108 plus 324 in my calculator? Well, they're not always going to give you the series. And even if I did give you the series on a quiz or a test like that, I won't give you any credit if you just write down an answer. You need to show your work. You need to show me how you used that formula because I want to make sure that you understand how to use that formula. You can always check your answer if it's a small enough series by just plugging those numbers in. But you hap absolutely have to know how to set that up and how to get your answer. So what I always recommend to students is every time you're learning a new formula, write down the formula so then that way you learn to memorize it faster. Because just seeing the formula and just plugging the numbers in, that's just only using one part of the way that your brain will learn something by seeing. But you also learn by doing and by hearing. And so even as you write it down, you might want to say it out loud to yourself. And then you'll have a faster way of learning it that way. But it's going to be our first term, g sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power. Uh, gives All divided by 1 minus r will give us the sum of that series. So for this problem, I can see my first term is 4. Now my constant ratio is 3, but it's going to be 3 to the fifth power. So we're trying to find the first, the sum of the first five terms in that series. Our denominator is going to be 1 minus r. Now I know 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but I want, to, want you to see where you get, where you would get that negative 2 from. And if you plug that in your calculator, which let's go ahead and I'm going to show you something else on your calculator, which will come in handy here in a little bit. And that's if you hit control, divide, you get this fraction bar. So then that way, when I have a situation like this, and I'm typing in, maybe I don't know how to do some of this in my head, so I'm just going to do 1 minus 3 to the fifth power. And then our denominator, we're going to have 1 minus 3. And hit Enter. And now you get 484. So using that control divide will make it easier, especially for the next example we do, when we're going to be working with some fractions as our value for r. So let's look at that one. And we'll do this one together again. So it says rewrite the finite series using sigma notation. So again, let's start with our symbol for sigma. We're going to start, we're going to tell people we're going to use the explicit formula that we're going to come up with here in a second. Starting with the first term to the last term. Well, what is the last term? There's one, two, three, four, five, six terms this time in the series. So the way we start this out is it's using the explicit formula. Our first term is also 6 times our constant ratio. Now to figure out what our value for r would be, we're going to pick a number in the series and divide by the one before it. Now I could use any one of these, but these here would be a little bit more complicated because we're working with fractions already. So I'm going to use these two at the beginning. So I'm going to take the 4 divided by the 6. Now as we do, so we get 2 thirds. So my constant ratio is 2 thirds. And that's being raised to the sixth power. If you notice, I put this two-thirds in parentheses with the exponent outside of it. It's really important to make sure you do that because it's not just the, the two that's being raised to the sixth power. It's not just the three that's being raised to the sixth power. It's the whole thing. Now we're going to evaluate that series using the formula. So again, we know that the first term of the series, well, let's write down the formula first just to get that practice in. So it's going to be g sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power. All of that divided by 1 minus r. So our first term we know is 6 times 1 minus my value for r, which is 2 thirds. That 2 thirds is being raised to the sixth power. 
All that's being divided by 1 minus my value for r, which is 2 thirds. And again, you might be able to figure out that 1 minus 2 thirds or 3 thirds minus 2 thirds would give us 1 third in our denominator. So you could do that to make it a little bit easier for yourself. But let's plug this in our calculators now. So again, it's really important to understand the control divide will give us that fraction bar. So now we're going to have, in our numerator, we'll have 6 times, so in parentheses, 1 minus, in parentheses, 2 divided by 3. And that 2 thirds is being raised to the 6th power. Arrow down to the denominator. And down there, we're going to put, if you didn't know, that 1 minus 2 thirds was 1 third. We're just going to put 1 minus 2 divided by 3 down here. Now hit enter in your calculator. Since we made those changes at the beginning, it gives us the exact solution of 1,330 divided by 81. And that would be your answer for that one. Well, let's look at these next examples. This time they give us the problem in sigma notation. We have to figure out the answer by using that formula that we did on the other side. Well, let's first identify what we already know. Now, this is in the form. Remember, this is our explicit formula. g sub 1 times r to our exponent of n minus 1. So I can see that the first term is going to be the 24. Oops. Now, you might be wondering, well, what if I didn't recognize that? Well, another way you could figure that out is by, just by putting 1 in to find our first term. Put 1 in for i. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 third of the 0 power is 1 times 24 would just be 1. So our first term is, um, so 24 times 1 would just be 24. So now to figure out our constant ratio, that's the 1 third. And n, we get that from the top part of sigma is 6. So now we're going to plug that information into the formula. So why don't I actually, you guys get some practice with that. So why don't you plug the information into your formula now to get your answer. So you can pause the video and hit play when ready to check to see if you did everything correctly. Okay, let's see how you did. You should have gotten 2,912 all divided by 81. Because the reason why is your first term is 24. Your value for r is 1 third. Don't forget it's 1 third to the 6th power there. Make sure you're using parentheses properly if you're not getting that correct answer. That's why it's important to show your work. Now, I'm going to have you guys do the next one on your own, but let's get you started because this one's a little bit different. We still need to find these three important pieces here. So to find the first term, we're going to put 1 in for i. Well, 3 to the first power is just 3. To figure out what r is, if you don't recognize that, it's, that the value for r would be 3, one way to do that is to come up with the series. So the second term in the series would be, well, 3 squared is 9. And the third term is 3 cubed, which is 27, and, and keep going. But you can see that you're multiplying by 3 each time if you do it that way. And we can see here that we're going to have a total of 10 terms in the series. So don't you guys pause the video now again and plug these numbers into your formula and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. You should have gotten 88,572. Again, just by plugging those numbers in. So if you didn't get that, make sure you plugged it in correctly. Double check the work that you did on your calculator. But otherwise, you should get 88,572. Now, there is a slight twist that we could do to this, prop, this uh, formula. If you're doing it by hand and you don't like working with negative numbers, because if you notice with the last one that we did, 1 minus 3 would be a negative 2 in our denominator. And in the numerator, you also end up with a negative. We could switch this around as this paragraph is telling us, to get our first term, that doesn't change, g sub 1, times r to the nth power minus 1, all divided by r minus 1. It doesn't matter to me which formula you memorize, but you have to have one of these memorized to know how to find the sum of a geometric series. Now, let's say if we're trying to figure out what r is, and we're dealing with a percent increase. Now, what this is saying is if we're dealing with a percent increase, and we don't just change a percent to a decimal. Here's an easy way to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to add that percent to 100, 100%. Because let's say if I have a population growth of 3.5%, it means it's growing by that much. So that means you have 100% of the population before plus another 3.5%. So you add that to 100, you get 103.5%. Change that to a decimal, you get 1.035. That would be your value for R. 
But that's only if it's a percent increase. If it's a percent decrease, you do something similar, except for this time, well, for one, an example of percent decrease is depreciation. So let's say if you buy a car and it's depreciating by 12% each year, you wouldn't use the 12% or 0.12. You'd first subtract that value from 100% because then that tells you how much value or how much is remaining and then change that remaining amount to a decimal. So 100% minus the 12% would give you 88%, which has a decimal would be 0.88. Let's look at this one here. Recall the disease outbreak from Lesson 8-4. This time, assume that the first week there were 14 cases and that each week thereafter, uh, the number of new infections increases by 25%. Well, this is a situation where it's increasing by 25%. So we're going to take that percent and add it to 100, which would be 125%. which has a decimal is 1.25. So that is my value for R. So when I'm using sigma notation to find the number of people infected by the nth week, we don't know what week we're going to end on, so we're going to use N above our sigma here. But then our explicit formula is we know our first term that there is 14 cases at first week, and it's increasing by 25%, which we know now that that value for R would be 1.25 to the n minus 1 as our exponent. So that's your explicit formula. Now it says how many people have the disease by the end of the fifth week? Well, in this case, again, we know that our first term is 14. And our value for r, which is 1.25. And we also know um, that our value for n this time is going to be 5. Okay, so let's plug that numbers, those numbers into our formula. So if you want to, you can write it down. But the first term is going to be the 14 times 1 minus our value for r, 1.25 to the nth power, which is 5, all divided by 1 minus 1.25. I can put negative 0.25 in the denominator. Now we're dealing with the number of people, so this one we don't want to leave it as a decimal. So we'll just round it. We end up getting approximately 115 people would have total would have the disease by the end of the fifth week. Well, there you have it. So again, don't just make sure you know the formula. Also make sure, because you absolutely positively need to know how to work with percents. If, remember, if it's a percent increase, add it to 100, and then change it to a decimal. If it's a percent decrease, or they just say that something's depreciating, subtract it from 100%, and then change it to a decimal. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.